Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today we're going to take a look at this. This is a Lodge pre-season carbon steel 8 inch skillet. I'm a big fan of the Lodge brand. I have many of their cast iron Dutch ovens. I got their cast iron skillets. I have their enamel Dutch oven. And I'm interested to see how their carbon steel stacks up against some of the French carbon steel pans. How does it do against Matfer, Debouillet, or Mobile? We're going to find out. Now I have a giant 14 inch Mobile carbon steel, a 12 inch Matfer, a beloved 9.5 inch Debouillet or Debouillet omelet pan. And now this 8 inch lodge pan hopefully will fill the final gap in my carbon steel lineup. Now this is obviously a smaller pan and for me it kind of fills a gap in my lineup but they make the exact same pan in different sizes. Now this 8 inch pan is probably not big enough to cook an omelet. It's big enough for one maybe two fried eggs, you could do scrambled eggs in it, a big hamburger patty or perhaps a small steak, maybe a piece of fish. Okay, it's made in the USA. I like that. We're in the middle of a trade war, so go USA. I also like the fact that when I open this up, it says to keep this pan 100 years. So if they're telling you how to keep this thing going for 100 years, that's a good sign that they believe in the quality of this pan. It comes pre-seasoned. It says seasoned steel. So we're going to put this thing through its paces. We're going to get it cleaned up, and then we're going to start cooking. Let's see how it goes. Now initially, I noticed this pan is a little bit different color, it's a little bit lighter, I expect it to darken up as we use it. But the main thing I noticed about it is that you can feel a texture. In the Mobile, in the Debouillet, in the Matfer, the cooking surface in the pan is very smooth. In this Lodge pan, I can feel a texture to it. Now I was a little bit worried that the long handle relative to the pan body might make the pan unbalanced. And for reference purposes, here's what I'm talking about. This is an example of a poorly designed and poorly weighted pan. Notice how just a little bit of pressure with my fingertip causes the pan to tip over. But I'm happy to say that the Lodge pan was very stable and didn't tip at all. So I'm happy to say that the pan arrived with a flat bottom and there's no shake or jiggle to it. Now if you're using gas, it doesn't matter that much, but if you have a glass stove top or a flat induction cooktop, a wobbly pan can cause some problems. Another initial reaction is that the metal of the Lodge pan feels a little thinner and lighter than the metal in my other pans. It's nowhere near as thick as a cast iron skillet, of course, but even compared to the Mobile and the Bayer and Matford pans, this pan feels a little thinner and lighter. Now that can be a good thing or a bad thing. For example, when I put the pan on the eye to heat it up for the fried egg test, the pan heated up in just about a minute, so that it heated up very quickly. On the downside, however, with the pan that thin and so responsive to the flame, you really have to keep an eye on it so that you don't scorch your food. Now we're going to start with the fried egg test. And for those who don't know, the fried egg test is just a way in which we test the cooking surface of a new pan. If the pan is seasoned correctly, if it's non-stick, then an egg should slide around like a hockey puck. Now for reference purposes, here are eggs sliding around in a lodge cast iron skillet that's seasoned correctly, also in a French pan that's been seasoned correctly. I use these as my reference pans. The eggs slide around wonderfully. Now the directions that come with the lodge pan say that when the pan is brand new, food may tend to stick a little bit, and for that reason to use a little extra oil. Got the pan heated up, in go the eggs, and unfortunately they're sticking. So I'm going to give this first fried egg test an F, a big old fail. So I decided to do another fried egg test. I cleaned the pan, reheated it, and tried it again. This unfortunately was a big old fail. I decided to do a third fried egg test. Unfortunately, this one was also a fail. Now after three failed fried egg tests, I decided to move on to a high heat sear test. For this, I'm going to use some 85-15 ground beef and brown some burgers. 
For the first one, I decided to use a little bit of oil. So I put the pan on the burner, turned it way up to high, got it up to its smoking point, and in goes the burger. So after a couple of minutes, I flipped the burger. I think it cooked up very well. I tried another burger. I think it cooked up very well. Now notice there's some mess left over in the bottom of the pan. So to clean that up, what you do is just take a little bit of hot water, pour it in the pan while the pan is still very hot, and scrape up all those bits with a wooden spoon or spatula, pour them out, and wipe out the pan with paper towels. Now of all the tests I've done with this pan, the burgers made the biggest mess, and the entire cleanup took less than 30 seconds. So I'm gonna say these pans clean up very, very easily. So I decided to cook another burger and repeated the process. For the third burger, I decided not to use any oil. And once again, it cooked up very well, seared really well, and I didn't really notice much difference in outcome between using oil or not using oil but the pan performed very well searing the meat. So the pan did very well searing meat at high temperatures. I decided to try a Beyond Meat patty. Once again, I heated up the pan, put in some oil, put in the Beyond Meat patty, and it fried up very well. I had no sticking at all with the Beyond Meat patty. And while these Beyond Meat patties may not be the exact food for me, the pan still cooked it correctly. Next, even though this is a smaller pan, I still wanted to test the cooking surface and see if it produced even cooking or had any kind of hot spot issues. The way I do this is frying some zucchini. I take some zucchini, cut them up, dunk them in milk, dunk them in some flour with salt, pepper, and cayenne, re-dunk them in milk, then dredge them in breadcrumbs, and then fry these up. Now as I fry these, if they turn brown and dark in different areas of the pan at different times, I can tell that the pan has hot spots. Now two things I note here is that when I flip the zucchini, I noticed that the pan didn't really have any noticeable hot spots. Everything seemed to cook at a fairly even pace. A follow up to that though is that this pan seems to cook very hot and very fast. I think it's because it's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit thinner metal than I'm used to and they tended to cook very fast. Okay, at this point I started to feel a lot better about the pan. We hit a few speed bumps starting out with the failed fried egg test, but it did really well searing three hamburgers. It did well cooking the Beyond Meat patty. It did very well cooking the zucchini, a couple of batches of those. So what I wanted to do now is revisit the fried egg test, see if the pan had changed at all, if maybe the seasoning had improved, over cooking a few times and try to cook some eggs again. So I did a fourth fried egg test. And this time, thankfully, it did a lot better. And I tried a fifth fried egg test, just to be sure. Okay, I'm happy to say that this is a very good solid pan, especially for the money. Now when I took it out of the box initially, I was a little bit worried because the pan has a little bit of a texture to it. And my other, my French carbon steel skillets don't have that texture. They're very smooth. So I was worried that this pan might have a little trouble with food sticking and especially passing the fried egg test because that's one of the things I really look at. Now the directions that come with the pan say that when the pan is new, foods may tend to stick just a little bit more, so use a little bit of extra oil. And I thought I did that when I did the egg test for the first time. I used oil and butter but the eggs stuck and then they kind of stuck and cracked on the second test and then they messed up on the third test. So I was really worried that this thing was going to never pass the fried egg test, it wasn't going to be slick enough, that this texture was going to grip the eggs and I was really going to have a lot of trouble. And that bothered me because I'm a big fan of the Lodge brand. I've got the Lodge Camp Dutch ovens, a couple of those I have the cast iron enamel Dutch oven, I have several of the frying pans, and trying this carbon steel skillet, you know, I was really hopeful that it was going to fit into my lineup really well. And thankfully, after all was said and done, it did. Because after the first few tries on that egg test where it didn't work properly, I went ahead and seared some meat. We cooked hamburgers three different times, and my wife said they were surprisingly yummy. 
And my question is, what do you mean surprising? Anyway, that's what she said. They were surprisingly yummy, and I thought they were very good. The uh, texture of the meat, it had kind of a crunch, kind of a chew to the outside, but was still tender on the inside, and a very good burger. So the pan produced very good browning of the ground beef. Uh, then we cooked a Beyond Meat patty, which I don't even know what's in those things, but they did not stick at all. So it was completely non-stick with the Beyond Meat patty. Whether or not you like a Beyond Meat patty is an another discussion, but they don't stick in this pan, which is nice. So after we cooked all that stuff, I went back to the fried egg test, cooked that fourth egg. I'm happy to say that that egg slid around very nicely. I didn't have to loosen up the edges with the spatula. I didn't have to shake it too hard or too fast. It loosened up on its own. It slid all over the place. And, I have, and I'm happy to say that the pan does pass the fried egg test. Now, even though the eggs are sliding around, I can still kind of feel that texture in the bottom of the pan. So while they do slide around, they're not quite as good as my uh, Debouillet omelet pan. When it comes to cooking eggs, I kind of think this is the gold standard. Um, eggs just slide around. Omelets are great. You can slide it back and forth. It has a curved interior, whereas the lodge pan has a more angled interior. Correspondingly, the uh, mapper also has an angled interior. Makes it a little bit different when you're flipping an omelet or flipping an egg. I really like the rounded sides for eggs. So my Debouille pan is still the gold standard for eggs. Fair enough, but the Lodge pan is still very good. It's also a very good value for the money because it's about half the price or 40% less, give or take, than either the Debouille or the Matford pans. Along those lines, it's very easy to get the lodge pans going right out of the box. They come pre-seasoned. I just gave mine a quick wash and I was up and cooking in five minutes. Whereas the Debouille, the Matfer, and some of the other French pans, they come coated in wax. And it usually ends up taking me an hour to two hours to get that wax off of there correctly. And then you also have to give the pans an initial seasoning. So that gives some people problems. They don't get the seasoning done correctly and it causes a lot of stress and headaches with some of these carbon steel pans. But thankfully the lodge didn't have that. So even though it may be a half step behind in the fried egg test compared to the fringe pans, it's still a very solid pan for the money. It's easier to use, it's easier to get started with. You don't have to worry about the seasoning as much and you can just start cooking with it. So if you're new to carbon steel or you are a big fan of the Lodge brand lineup, this is a good place to get started with carbon steel skills.